All right, we're going to learn how to make a graph in Excel. And the data we're going to use is the data I've gathered in my ice melting experiment. First thing we need to do, obviously, is to open up Excel. There we go, and we get a blank spreadsheet. And our next step will be to enter our data. Now in the left-hand column, we're going to put our independent data. And for us, that is the amount of ice in each bag in milliliters. Okay. And in the right-hand column, we're going to put our dependent data. And that is our time in seconds. Then we're going to expand these columns just by clicking and dragging. Okay. Now in the A column, we're going to enter in our dependent data sets. So we had three 50 milliliter bags, three 100, and three 200. Okay. Now in the B column, we'll enter in all of our corresponding data. And just to speed up the process, I already have this data copied, so I'm going to paste it in like that. Okay. Now we have everything we need to make the graph. What we're going to do is we're going to click in the top left corner and then we're going to drag all the way down. So now we have everything we need highlighted. We're going to click insert and here we have our choices for all the graphs and plots we can use. And the one we want to pick is our scatter plot. We're going to use just the basic scatter plot. Click on that and here we go. Put this down here. And the first thing we want to do, ooh, there, we, there we go, is we want to edit our title so that it reads as dependent variable, in our case time, versus independent variable, amount. Okay. Now we want to add our axes labels. Excel doesn't do that automatically, so we need to go in and do that on our own. And up here on chart tools, we have to make sure our graph is selected, otherwise this won't show up. And to know that it's selected, when we click on it, we'll see both a border around it and the chart, tool, chart tools menu will show up. And once it's selected, to add our axis titles, we're going to click layout and then axis titles. And for our horizontal or our x-axis, we're going to uh, hover over a horizontal axis and then put title axis below. And then we'll have amount in milliliters. And we'll do the same thing for our vertical or our y-axis. We're going to select rotated title. And this will be time in seconds. Okay. Now our next step is to add a trend line. So again, we're going to stay on layout. And here we can see trend line. More trend line options. And we can pick from exponential, logarithmic, so on and so forth. But just looking at our data points, we can see that the relationship appears to be linear. So we're just going to leave linear selected. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to click the boxes to display our equation and to display the R squared value. And then we'll click close. And here we have our equation, R squared value. Move them over so we can see them. And the R squared value, if you don't know, it tells you how well your trend line fits the data. And as you can see, we have a 0.99 R squared value. And that means that our trend line is a very, very good fit for our data. And that is the first graph we want to make. Our next graph that we want to make is going to display the, the rate of time of melting versus the amount. And to do that, we're going to have to calculate the average times. So again, we'll come back up here. And we're going to type in our independent data, which will be the amount in milliliters. And we'll do our average time in seconds. Okay. Again, expand your columns out so you can see what you're dealing with. Now, since I'm averaging these three times, I'm only going to have one data point for 50 milliliter, 100, and 200. Now, to do now actually calculate the average, we can enter these numbers in a calculator, divide by three. But just for the sake of learning, we're going to see how we do it with the formulas built into Excel. So we click the Formulas tab up, up top. And then underneath the Auto Sum in the List Down menu, we'll see the Average function. Click that. And in between parentheses, we want to enter in the range of cells that our, that our times are listed in. So in our range is from B2 down to B4. 
So here we're going to type B2 to B4. And we can see that the three cells that we want are highlighted. So we'll hit enter and there's our average time. Now for the other two amounts we'll do the same thing. It's from B5 to B7. One more time. From B8 to B10. Okay, there are average times. Now using our average times we're going to calculate the rates. And to do that we want what well, we need to keep in mind that our rates are going to be seconds per milliliter. We're determining how many seconds it takes for one milliliter to melt. So we again we could enter this in a calculator. We could do 68, 67 seconds over 50 milliliters. That's an easy way to do it, but just again for the sake of learning, we're going to figure out how to do this using some of Excel's built-in features. And to calculate this using Excel, we'll hit equals. And then we're going to type in the cell where our time is located, which is this is F2. So F2 divided by the cell where our amount is located, E2. And these are color coded. We have F2 in blue, E2 in green. And that way we know what we're entering in is actually correct. And we'll hit enter. And there's the rate 137.34 seconds for one milliliter of ice to melt in the 50, meter, 50 milliliter bags. Now we could retype this for these two boxes, these two cells, but Excel has this nifty feature where if we hover the cursor over this black box here in the corner, we can click that and drag down and it will automatically translate the function F2 divided by E2 for these two cells. So here in cell G3 we have F3 divided by E3, F3 divided by E3, and again for G4, F4 divided by E4. Now we have all the data that we need to make our, our, our second graph, our second plot. So we're going to select our independent data, which is the amount, and we do not want to select our average time. We want to skip over to rate. And to do that, to select rate without selecting average time, we need to push control on the keyboard and then click and drag on the data. Okay, now again we're going to go back up to insert. Just like scatter plot, and there's our scatter plot. Now we can we can change this the same way we have this one using all the same things that I've shown you for this graph. Edit the title, add axes, titles, things like that. But I'll leave that up to you.